What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is part one of the budget K-Swap build. First of all, I'm gonna start things off by explaining what consists of my budget big break kit that I have in the car because a few of you guys have been asking for the specifics of that. I'll be going through the parts that I gathered up so far and we need to get that K-Swap on the stand and start going through everything so I know exactly what I'm up against so we could get this thing underway. So stay tuned. All right guys, so I'm gonna go over my budget big brake kit and this will apply to Honda Civics, I think 92 to 2000, and it will apply to the DC2 Integra. So if you have a different generation Civic or Integra, you can do your research on hondatech.com. That's where I found the write-up on this brake setup here, but uh, definitely do your research on it if you have a different model Civic or Integra and you can find your uh, information there. So basically what I have is an ITR Mini Cooper hybrid setup. And bas basically if you have an EK or SI or DC2 Integra, you're okay as far as the spindles go. Now if you have a CX or DX model, you're gonna first have to source you out some spindles from the EK, SI or DC2 Integra. The spindles that I have are, for, are from the DC2 Integra. And the reason you need those spindles is because the mounting tabs for the caliper bracket fit this setup. If you have the DX or CX, they're too small and will not fit the calipers. This is the ITR Integra Type R brake caliper setup. And uh, basically the rotors is from an 07 Mini Cooper base model, 280 millimeter. They have the same lug pattern, but the holes are a little bit bigger. And that's not a big deal because once you put the wheel on and clamp it down, tighten it down, it will not move. So you're okay with that. And uh, I've been running this setup and had no problems with it. And if you want to take it even further, you can also upgrade the brake master cylinder and your brake lines as well, which I did as, as well, and I'll cover that here in a minute. But 07 Mini Cooper base model, uh, 280 millimeter rotors is what you need. Integra Type R, ITR, brake calipers and brackets is what you need. And also you can run the, the ITR pads, but they will overlap the top of the rotor. So I went ahead and sourced out 04 to 08 TSX pads. And you want to go that route basically to spend the extra money because as you can see, the brake pads sit lower for the TSX and they sit just a little bit below the lip of it right there, which is just about perfect. And this will give you pretty much a true Type R brake setup on your Civic. And uh, it is phenomenal, the difference between the stock setup as opposed to these. So cover it again, you're going to need 07 Mini Cooper brake rotors. You're going to need the ITR Integra Type R brake caliper and bracket. You're going to need 04 to 08 TSX pads. You're gonna have to trim the back plating to fit these calipers, or you can delete it like I did. And you're gonna have to delete the spring for the caliper that sits on the inside because you will have interference and you'll get a whole lot of squeaking and uh, rubbing noise coming from that. Now I had the springs off and I've had no issues with these brakes whatsoever. And uh, I will put a link in the description of all the parts that I found for this setup. Now I got all my parts off of eBay and I was able to get you know new parts at the best price that I can find. And I highly recommend you do that as well. If you wanna go ahead and go the extra mile, you can also get you some Repla replacement lines for the uh, the brakes. I went ahead and got stainless uh, steel brake lines all the way around and you can just get you know regular Civic brake lines. They will fit and uh, bolt up to the ITR calipers and also you want to get the uh, master cylinder. I highly recommend you upgrade your master cylinder because I installed it with the stock master. It felt better but once I installed a different master cylinder it was night and day 
Now on the EK and EJ setup Civics, it is a direct swap in for the ITR uh, master cylinder. I think the Integra, if you have like a DC2 Integra or whatnot, you want to go with like a GSR uh, master cylinder. If you have the EK, EJ, you want to go with the ITR uh, Type R master cylinder that will bolt directly into these chassis because the brake lines are a little bit different set up as far as the Integra to the Civic. So once I swapped that uh, ITR brake master cylinder in, it, it totally changed the whole performance feel of the vehicle. Now I still have brake drums in the rear and I have not had an issue at all. And uh, you don't have to go the extra mile upgrading to disc in the back. If you already have it, great. But if you don't, don't worry about it. You can keep the stock proportioning valve. It'll work with this setup and uh highly recommend doing this guys so i'll put the link in the description for all the parts that i found and you can go ahead and upgrade your civic to this setup and trust me you will not be disappointed and it will save you a lot of money so now that you guys know the details of the budget big brake setup in the civic behind me i'm going to go ahead and go over the story of it real quick and why i am case swapping the civic so as you can see i have a nice h to be setup in the car but I did not do my research whenever I built this engine and I bored it out too much. Now these cylinders are fiber reinforced and you're not really supposed to be boring out H22 blocks. And I did not know that. I bought some bigger pistons and I bored it over too much. Shortly thereafter, about 500 miles, it developed, you know, a lot of smoking and I dropped compressions in cylinders three and four. So for that reason, I was looking for another engine. And at that time, I came across my $500 K-Swap over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retire this swap from this car and I will fix the problem later on down the road, get me another short block or whatnot, and I'll utilize this swap in a future build. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about this $500 case swap I got. And basically I got everything here for $500 and you cannot beat that. Now it is the unpopular K20A3 and there's a lot of shit talking that goes on about the uh, this type of engine, you know, it's hated, it's the most hated engine out of the whole K series. But for $500, it gets my car up and going. It allows this chassis to be K swapped. And if I do not like this engine, I can also later on down the road get me like a K20A2 or something and swap it at that time. But I thought to myself, it would be a great journey to take everybody along and find out first and foremost is it worth it to K swap? a K20 A3 into a chassis and have fun with it. So I'm going to go ahead and run with it since I got it at such a cheap price and we'll just see how it turns out. But I got the transmission, the engine harness, the engine, the shifter cables, the shifter box, the ECU, the radiator, power steering pump, everything. The car was rear ended and he took everything out of it and he sat on it for a while. He ended up selling the, the uh, car that he was gonna swap it in and he just wanted to unload it, but he wanted it all gone. And for $500, you could not beat that. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I thought it would be a great build to take you guys along for the journey. And we will find out just in fact, is it worth it or not? So, but I was doing research on this chassis and uh, the EKs and EJs, they say that the cross member sits the engine a little too far forward, but Hasport has an answer for that with their EKK2 mounts. But you have to utilize a 92 to 95 Civic cross member or a DC2 Integra cross member. I sourced out a DC2 Integra cross member and a power steering rack because this is a manual steering rack. Now a lot of people for simplicity like the manual steering rack, but me, I really can't stand it. The steering ratio sucks and I want a more precise feel and the power steering Integra rack and pinion is going to give me that. I do have the power steering pump so I'll be converting this car to power steering setup. Now I'm going to go over the parts that I have thus far. I have the EKK2 Passport mount kit right here. It is the softer 62A urethane so it's not going to vibrate as hard throughout the chassis. So I wanted a more comfortable feel so I went for the softer urethane and it is a nice piece indeed. I really like the quality. They included all the fasteners. I ended up getting a stainless steel clutch line to make it all work. And I also got me a K-Tune radiator mount kit because like I stated, I have the RSX radiator. 
and this will allow me to utilize a stock radiator. So it's going to keep costs low. I won't have to source out a aluminum radiator or whatnot. So it's going to keep the cost down in that aspect. And for K-Tune, oh, K-Tune, sorry, K-Series engines, they have a returnless fuel type system. These cars have a return type. So you need a different fuel rail in order to make that work. Now I got this real cheap uh, eBay uh, fuel rail that is the return type and it came with the special piece right here for the fuel filter so I got this cheaper fuel rail we're gonna make that work with this car and uh, well, with this engine in this car and uh, that will allow me to run that engine and uh, keep the budget on it relatively cheap as well so just trying to get it all up and going and not spend a million dollars in the process but I did not want to cheap out on the mount so I went with Hasport mounts so I think I have a great starting point. I need to recondition this cross member, but I did some research on that and they said I needed the fasteners off the Civic or the DC2 Integra to make it work on this chassis. So I need to go to a junkyard and source out some fasteners, but I will be you know, reconditioning this to make it look new and everything before it goes into the car. But as you can see, I do have a good starting point. And now that we uh, have gone over what I have, I do want to do a compression test on this engine to determine the health of it. Now the guy was pretty straightforward when I got it. He said the uh, engine has about 140k on it, but uh, he drove it because it was rear-ended. It was still drivable. He drove it. It still had plenty of power. It ran great. No check engine lights and also did not smoke. So I still want to determine the health of the engine with a compression test. And I'm going to put it on a stand and take everything off like the transmission and whatnot just to go through, you know, the seals in the clutch condition because I don't want to put it in the car and have uh, things fail prematurely right off the bat. So just want to make sure that all my bases are covered before I put this engine into this car. So that's what we're going to be doing next. We'll go ahead and do a compression test and just see how well it is in the end. Okay, so I got everything prepped in order to do the compression test. I have my compression tester hooked up right there to cylinder one. I had to take off the intake manifold in order to gain access to the starter, but I have my jumper box. Basically, I had a leftover BMW power cable. I just went ahead and tightened that in. I got it clamped down here to the positive. I have the ground right there on the bolt that's securing the starter to the uh, block. And also I have a alligator clip on the starter solenoid and basically I'm gonna turn on the box and I'm just gonna engage the uh, starter solenoid with this connector here and when I do that it's gonna crank the engine over and we'll be able to get a compression test on all four cylinders Looks like we got about 185 on the first cylinder. One eighty on the second cylinder. One eighty five on a third cylinder. One eighty five on the fourth cylinder. This thing has been sitting for a while, so as a compression test for an engine that's been sitting for quite some time in someone's garage and it being that equal across the bank, this engine's very healthy. And granted, the A3 has lower compression ratio than like an A2 or whatnot. So 
This engine is very healthy and it will do well for the swap. Alright guys, so we're off to a great start with this project. This engine right here has great compression across all four cylinders, but she is definitely grimy. She is in need of a deep cleaning. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all gaskets and seals. And then at that time, I will be, you know, repainting it, making it look new. And I'm probably going to go with kind of the same color combination like this. I'll do a wrinkle black on the valve cover and whatnot. But I definitely need to get me a parts list going so I can prioritize things. And I do have the parts over here on the floor. Now the clutch kit don't seem to be in that terrible of a shape. But probably what I'm going to do is order a new clutch kit and resurface that flywheel. And I'll be cleaning that transmission and probably repaint, repainting that as well. So definitely needed parts list going so I could prioritize things and uh, tackle this thing in a timely manner. Now once I get all that caught up, I'll be removing the engine at that time, installing the uh, Hasport mounts and the cross member. And also want to mention on that cross member for this DC2 cross member, you need the DC2 lower control arms as well. And I do have them right there. So... You know, just need to prioritize things and uh, take it from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, go ahead and subscribe if you're here for the first time. And if you did like it, go ahead and hit the like button. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and share, guys. Definitely see you guys on the next episode.